Someone asked me for the hybridization of CO2, but really that depends on which atom you're talking about. The carbon has a different hybridization than the oxygen. Now, each of these atoms comes with an S orbital and then three P orbitals. Some people call them PX, PY, and PZ, but let's just agree that there's three of them, right? Now, the way that I figure out hybridization is to set aside P orbitals every time I need a pi bond. A pi bond is the second or third bond between any two atoms. Between the carbon and oxygen here, let's say the first bond between them is sigma. The first bond between any two atoms is always sigma. And then we have one pi bond here. Same on the other side. The first bond between any two atoms is sigma. And then the other one is pi. Great. Now, let's talk about carbon. This carbon needs two sigma bonds and two pi bonds. Pi bonds require p orbitals to be left over after hybridization. So one, two pi bonds require one, two of the p orbitals, and we're left with an s and a p to hybridize. That carbon is sp hybridized. Cool? Cool. The oxygen only requires one pi bond. So you only require one of the p orbitals to be set aside. And therefore, it's sp2. See, there's two p's. It's kind of like writing p squared when you write sp2 hybridization, because you're combining the s and two of the p's. It's different because this oxygen only has one pi bond attached to it. So does this one, by the way. It's the exact same. But the carbon has two pi bonds attached to it. Therefore, it's only sp1. There were three. One, two gets set aside for the pi bonds, sp1. We don't write the one. You never write an exponent of one. But hey, that's the way it goes. The hybridization of carbon is sp and of oxygen is sp2. That's the end of it. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.